Welcome to the program today. Mondo Gonzalez here in studio with special guest Tom Hughes. But before we talk to Tom, I want to remind you and invite you to uh, come to our conference. We have a, a very good, uh, huge, large prophecy conference coming to Norman, Oklahoma. Tom is going to be there with us. Uh, you can get more information at uh, watchersweekend.com. And if you are unable to actually travel there, we want to invite you to join us on our live stream. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get all of the information as well as have six months to take a listen afterwards. You're in no hurry. You don't have to worry about going back and forth between uh, rooms. You can get it all online. So again, you can find that at watchersweekend.com. Today, we're going to talk about Tom's new book called Marking the Masses. And I just want to come right out and give, give a summary here, which is incredible what this book accomplishes. It says, if the world knew what was coming, uh, they would fear the future. Marking the masses is a wake-up call to both believers and unbelievers alike regarding an agenda that was set in motion one night in 1961. Since then, the plan to enslave society has been woven into every aspect of our lives. Today, the pieces are all in place, and the catalyst to trigger the rapid and conclusive collapse of the world as we know it is about to begin, and you are already part of it. Welcome, Tom. Hey, thank you, Mondo. Great to be here. So this is kind of a, a great synopsis. And right here at the beginning, to kind of give a little bit of the background because we want to play a trailer. But kind of before we do that, kind of help us to understand a little bit about the book. All right. So uh, the book is, what I've done with the book is really to help put into um, one place all the different dynamics of the things that are going on in the world, especially the Western world, to help people understand, hey, this is why this is happening. But you look at all of these different dynamics and more, what's happening in the schools, what's happening in the courts, what's happening in Washington, and you go, this makes absolutely no sense. And biblically, we know the direction that things are gonna go. And so what I wanted to do was put everything into a format where everybody who picks it up can read it and go, aha, now I understand why, and I connected all of the dots to weave everybody through, because it does all weave together. There's a very sinister plan behind it, the sinister one is behind it, and you can see it. And so that's what I did with the book. I wanted everybody to be able to get it. For the seasoned prophecy person, I wanted to have the depth there that would take them to an understanding that they probably didn't get yet. Uh, there's, as we're still working through things. And also for the person who doesn't know the Lord, but wants to know what in the world's going on, this book walks them through the process, gives us the why, the how, the what, where it's all going. And for us, what are we, what are we gonna do about it? What are we doing now? You know, that, when I read the book, that's exactly what I saw was uh, Tom bringing together this unifying theme, again, even in the title itself, Marking the Masses. And there is a direction that all this is heading, and we're going to watch a trailer here, and you can kind of see the overview. I had a conversation with my dad. He used to work for a company called Teledyne back in the early 1960s. And he was invited to a party in the Hollywood Hills. He said all the bigwigs were there, Henry Singleton and so forth. And he said an individual showed up and they're standing in the backyard looking into the city of Los Angeles. You see all these, uh, all these lights in the city out there and all the people that are out there. Someday, we're gonna be able to control everyone. And he wasn't referring to just Los Angeles. Everybody is gonna be identified. It's called the mark of the beast. Choosing the mark is really choosing to either live or die. There's no escape from the system. Well, welcome back. And as you can see from the trailer, very, very well done trailer. This is, this is awesome. We don't often get a trailer for books. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we don't, you know, and uh, the, in fact, there's a whole video uh, that the trailer came from uh, that was, uh, that was uh, filmed. And uh, it's really based on a conversation that I had with my dad. And my dad was one of the first people in the tech industry as we know it today. And he was a metallurgist. They needed that in, in developing the transistor, uh, which we understand now if you go towards the, 
silicon, the, the chip, and Silicon Valley. My dad was right in the very beginning as Silicon Valley was just beginning to be built back in 1961. But all of this, the entire book was based on this conversation that my dad had and then conveyed to me and, um, and it developed, uh, I said, Dad, I gotta tell people because this connects with everything I talked about where people say I'm crazy. I said, the things you're talking about, you lived it, you worked it, you know these people who built the system that we now have today. Did he have uh, any prophetic understanding back then when he heard it? And how, how did he kind of, how did he kind of wrestle with it through the years? If he, at all? Great question. He did not have any prophetic understanding at all. So my family was raised Catholic. My dad went to Catholic church because my mom made him, mm -hmm. you know, yep. that kind of thing, yep. right? And then uh, he, he get, my dad got saved in the early 1990s. Uh, Dr. Reagan, uh, David Reagan was very instrumental in my dad coming to know the Lord and Bible prophecy. It, what's funny about my dad, he, he, I, I became a believer probably about five years before he did, and I realized he started knowing more about Bible prophecy than me. It made me jealous, so I really, <laughs> I really started studying at that point. Uh, but So he had no clue then. He does now. Mm -hmm. And the things he was working on, incredible. What happened with him was he said most of the men that he met, he said some of the smartest men in the, on the whole planet were part of what was taking place from IBM to Teledyne to these other companies. He said most of them really had good intentions. They weren't building their computers or the, te the, the whole tech system uh, with nefarious intentions. They, they weren't thinking, hey, we're gonna do some really bad stuff. This is what we're gonna do. However, he tells the story, and you saw that in the trailer, he was invited to a party with all these same companies and guys uh, in the Bel Air area of the Hollywood Hills. And he, this gentleman came up to him. He said, you know what, Jim, looking down at the lights of Los Angeles, it was nighttime. He said, one day we're gonna be able to control every single one of these people. And you know, this is 60, 62 years ago now. And we see how far things have advanced and this is exactly what's going on. And there's some very evil people now that are involved and have some very evil intentions. Yeah, you know, when we think about uh, just <clears throat> the Bible in general, that conspiracy, <laughs> I mean, it's become a, to me, it's, it's such a vindicated word now. It's just two people, you know, planning something nefarious, two or more. And uh, when we look at the master conspirator in the Bible, he's been there from the beginning even before Adam and Eve, you know, what, what, it, he shows up on the scene in Genesis 3 uh, with, again, evil intentions. And then he's recruited some people to help him. And his, his goal has always been to steal, kill, and destroy, as we know what Scripture says. And so you have, sometimes you have people that uh, are more willing to join in that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the term conspiracy has been, um, it, it, the, the narrative is against they just say, well, that's just a conspiracy. You're just a nut. No, conspiracy is a legitimate plan for evil intention. In Psalm 2, when the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing, that term plot a vain thing is literally a conspiracy. They're conspiring against God, against the Almighty and against His anointed, against God the Father and against God the Son. Psalm 2 lays it out. And you see these conspiracies against God, against his people throughout the Old Testament, you read them. In the New Testament, you see it too. That's what they are. And these are real. They're not some crazy theories. You know, you look back and we used to say, well, that, you're, that's just a conspiracy theory. Well, three months uh, later, you find out, no, that was fact, mm -hmm. right? And we're able to, again, you can weave through these things because we have the Bible. And, and a lot of things um, you look at in, in People go, how do, you, how do you know this? You, know, you write, you, you, do the, you do these things. And we know them because we know what the Bible says. Each book I've written, I based it upon the Bible. This book, based it upon the Bible, then you look at what is going on, you go, I get it. I totally get it now. And it strengthens our faith also. Uh, and we also know what the end game is. And man, there is so much hope. The fear mongers are out there. Uh, the, the, the globalists are constantly cramming their fear-mongering down our throats, and then they paint us as being the doomer, gloomers, <laughs> right. fear-mongers. No, 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 we're the ones who bring hope into a conversation where they are scaring everybody, mm -hmm. because in the fear, they're gonna bring about 
the technology. They're going to implement it. We know that. We see it's already it's already being implemented. But also the religious system and all the conditioning. And the only way they're able to condition is by scaring the people. Yeah, I want to talk more about that, the conditioning aspect in a moment. Marking the masses, uh, we're going to take a little break here where you can see how to get our magazine where we try to keep you updated every single month. Uh, current events, topics, biblical ideas, question and answers. Uh, keep, keeping us, as always, the, the title of the magazine is Prophecy Watcher. And so that's what we want to do. In case you haven't noticed, the whole world is spinning out of control. But we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran, China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs that feature in-depth teaching on the ancient book of Enoch, heaven and the new Jerusalem, the biblical case for the rapture, a look at how God put the gospel in the stars, what really happened at the Tower of Babel, and Ezekiel's prophecy on the battle of Gog and Magog. This special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Well, welcome back. And we're discussing Tom Hughes' new book, Marking the Masses. And so before the break, uh, one of the things that you do so well in the book, and I hope that anybody that's watching uh, is, is aware Let's talk about just the word conditioning, mm -hmm. because uh, over the past few years, you know, being a pastor in the midst of COVID, but I was surprised at how uh, many people just said, oh, the government said it, the experts said it, the science said it, without really thinking. Let's, let's talk about how they, how did we get here? How did we get to be conditioned this way? Yeah. Generally. Really, when you look at it, it stems from the heart of man. Uh, so man has this sinful nature, and it's very problematic. And even with those who are believers in Christ, if they don't... The, let me go even further back, right? Uh, to the problem that we see in American churches. When you look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, for example, what's going to happen in the last days, the people are going to raise up for themselves teachers that will itch their ears, and the, and the teachers are going to come along, they're going to deny the truth. In fact, I talk about this in the book too, how that actually developed, the complete denial of the truth. And the reason they deny the truth is because the truth is offensive. So the people in America, American churches, I'm not saying all churches, right? Yeah. yeah. But they got away from the word. The uh, seminaries are, they don't promote the teaching of the word as being truth anymore. Inerrancy, Some do, or none of that. Mm -hmm. So what you have in the pulpits is not the Bible anymore. You have feel-good sermons, and it's been going on for a long time. Uh, when, when I think of 2 Timothy chapter 4, the people raise up for themselves teachers that will itch their ears. Seminaries teach their men that they're sending out to start a church. Well, do demographic study. See what the people want. That's been going on. I've been a believer for 35 years. When I became a believer 35 years ago, I remember those things back then. So it's been going on for a long time. So the spiritual foundation has been laid. And then all of the scary things. You go back to the conversation that Satan has with the Lord about Job. And what is it? Skin for skin, a man will do anything to save his life. So people are easily manipulated in fear. Well, this is going to, uh, wow, your health. At, at the, the uh, salvation of your health and your life, people will do almost anything. 
they'll take whatever drug they're told to take, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll go to almost any direction to any extreme to be able to save themselves if they're told they're going to die. And liberties? They'll surrender their liberties, which I talk about in the book too. Surrender their freedoms. We've been watching it. Same thing as you. Uh, me being a pastor through COVID, um, I said, we're not going to close our church. But what was amazing was um, probably half the church left and wrote letters, you know, like you're killing everybody. You're, don't you're, you're, you're a killer, Don't you yeah. realize what you're doing? But you can see, I mean, I'm looking at the facts going, wait a minute, this is a very strange thing. So I didn't believe the science, which I also deal with in the yes, book is the yeah. science. And, but then the church is filled up with other people who are looking for a church to go to. So all these people left, other people came in. And uh, just a very interesting dynamic though. So the church has been softened because the truth hasn't been taught, and then the fear-mongering, that it, it's a constant drum that's beaten. Climate change now, mm -hmm. it's just constant. And so the fear is there. People are, uh, people are nervous. They're, they're like uh, living, they've got anxiety issues, and they're afraid. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, when you think about, uh, you know, the, the title, Marking the Masses, uh, one of the great things Tom did here is, we have, and we'll talk about that, that, what, the way I see you, you designing the book is we know Revelation 13. There's a mark of the beast coming. But it doesn't, it doesn't just go, we're not Mayberry today, and then all of a sudden tomorrow, or t Mayberry, here we are, the rapture happens, tomorrow the whole world goes into a, a beast system. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a progression that happens. And so we have this midpoint where the mark of the beast uh, appears. But yet, the way that you design is to say, hey, again, it's not just going to come on in one day, even though the mark appears, but how did the people get mm -hmm. there into the tribulation period, where now when the mark finally does become implemented, they're willing and relatively eager for such reasons? Mm -hmm. uh, they've been conditioned. And so, in one word, in fact, I think you mentioned that word a few minutes ago, it's this conditioning process. That is exactly what has been going on for the last several years. I mean, you can go way back and see the conditioning process. I mean, you can go back to the Tower of Babel and see these things. Mm -hmm. But really, the increase of it, you can go back to the 1960s. But through laws that have been passed, through you're a bad person, the marginalization of communities, and we see it more and more. But now with the conditioning, what do we have? We have the fear mongering from the last three and a half years. Don't even need to talk about it. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Yeah. Very well what that is. Uh, then you look at climate. What do we hear? Everybody's going to die unless you do your part. Every single young person, the median age worldwide right now, I believe, is 30 years old. Uh, and then you take the millennial age, which I think is 27 to 44, and you start to realize the, the uh, surveys that have been done within these age groups. They aren't believing in God the way that we do. Uh, in fact, they're believing the lies that they're being told. We have, we're all going to die because climate's never been like this before. Well, it always has been. But no, but they're told differently. So all you got to do is work it out a few years and realize the high schoolers are, are in college, yeah. the college students have all graduated, and it's, it's, it's the majority of the population now. The rest of us are getting older. So the conditioning is all here, which is absolutely necessary in order for Satan to be able to get his man, Antichrist, ready. Um, you know, I've said this many times, when Satan in Revelation chapter 12 is kicked out of heaven, what happens? He knows he has little time. How much time will he spend building infrastructure? Zero. Zero. He's got seven <laughs> years. Zero. It all has to be built. So we're in that process and people ask me, well, why do you even talk about this? We're going to be out of here. Well, guess what? We're, we're living in the, in the process right now. We're living in it. So we need to understand the why so we can communicate. It will strengthen us, how, uh, where it's going. We're going to be much stronger for, uh, for the, uh, the work of the Lord. I tend to think that we, we're, we're, the church is going to see far more than maybe what we think we're going to see, that the Lord's going to allow us to remain a little longer mm -hmm. in order to, again, to be witnesses and we're to occupy until He comes. And uh, so I, I don't necessarily think the rapture's next week, even though I know it can happen any time. Yeah. But I think the Lord's going to allow us to be witnesses for a little bit longer. Uh, however that means, I don't know. 
But I'll tell you a little story. Yesterday I was, I was at the airport and uh, I was coming back uh, from, a, from a trip. And, you know, I know this, but it was just weird seeing it. I'm sitting there and I, and I just happened to be looking around. I was kind of bored. And uh, I look around and I look up and there was probably 200 people in my little terminal area. And I would say 90 to 95%, they were just like this. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never really seen it that stark. And then I started thinking about, you know, mm -hmm. again, what you, what you write in the book is the, what, are, what is influencing them? Mm -hmm. Now we talk about the younger generation, but everybody, they're conditioned now and we get our news and we get our thinking, how many hours a day are we right here looking at something that's telling us what, indoctrinating us. Yeah. Every, everybody's being conditioned, right? And your only defense is the Bible. Uh, in fact, if, if you go back to Nazi Germany, you have 95% of the people that went along with Hitler. 65% didn't necessarily agree with him, but they went along with him. You have a whole conditioning there. Um, you have people who just want to be able to get along. You know, you have so many different processes. And the other, in the 5%, who, who stood up against Hitler, the majority of them who actually were the ones who believed the Bible was yeah. true. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible is our defense. We as b genuine believers in Christ are a problem for this whole system. Yeah. Um, but with that, when you start looking at it and you realize also, listen, Satan isn't satisfied with just getting the left to receive the mark of the beast. He's gonna be after both. So he's gonna come in with the answers. Everybody's gotta be conditioned on the left and the right, and there's plenty of people on the right that are also in this conditioning process. They don't realize it because their political leader has a different opinion than this political leader. But they're being conditioned, yeah. and they don't see it. And so it has to happen in order for people to get to a place that after the rapture, they're gonna go along with this leader who's yeah. gonna come along as having all the answers. Yeah. You know, I think the summary here for the moment is the farther you get away from the scripture, uh, the more open you are to, to be deceived. And, and that really is the truth. Jesus talks about us being sanctified by his truth and being protected and living by the word. We're going to take a little break here where you can see how to get marking the masses. For those of you who have studied the prophecies of the Bible, you know we're watching the end times come alive. This new system of government control has the ability to micromanage the lives of everyone on the planet. We're rushing headlong towards a digital currency, a digital ID, and a cashless society. And yes, it's all in the Bible, written thousands of years ago. The Mark of the Beast is clearly in sight, a system of total control instituted by the Antichrist at the midpoint of the Tribulation. Contrary to recent speculation, the mark has not arrived as of yet, but we can see the handwriting on the wall. It's coming soon. Pastor Tom Hughes has penned the most up-to-date work on the mark, how it's instituted, the technology behind it, how close it is to being perfected, how AI fits into the equation, and what happens to those who take this mark and declare their loyalty to the Antichrist. His book, Marking the Masses is your guidebook to the future and a look back at the events that brought us to this precipice today. It's time the world woke up to Satan's evil plans and the minions who do his bidding. Prophecy Watchers would love to send you a copy of Marking the Masses. For your gift of $25 or more, we'll send you Tom's book and we'll cover the shipping anywhere in the USA. For our international friends, please note that additional shipping costs will apply. Just call the toll-free number you see on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.com. Now is not the time to be fearful. We're alive at the greatest moment in history and we need to take this important information to the masses of people who don't know Jesus and will soon find themselves in the worst time in the history of the world, the tribulation. Tom Hughes will be one of the featured speakers at our ministry's upcoming Prophecy Conference in Norman, Oklahoma, October 5th through the 8th. We're almost sold out, but we're offering live streaming of the event to all our friends around the world. Go to watchersweekend.com for all the details. Thanks for watching today, and keep looking up. Well, welcome back, and so Tom, as we, as we kind of wrap up we've talked about the conditioning we've talked about you know the the, the dragon the beast system you, you bring up here which i i think 
Uh, give us kind of a, a synopsis about wokeism. Uh, I think many people, they hear it, but they don't really know what it means. W w what do you mean by it? Uh, I, I believe wokeism really falls into the category uh, that comes from, uh, if you look at the ESGs, let me just start there. Mm -hmm. E for environmental, S for social, G for governance. Wokeism really is all-encompassing. And it really is, I believe, the religious foundation for this final religion, uh, the harlot, uh, Revelation chapter 17, uh, the woman who rides the beast, the 10 kings are going to use this religious system. It's, a, it's internal, and most people wouldn't even think of it as religion, but transgenderism, uh, that's religion. You start studying the gods of ancient civilizations, you realize, wait a minute, they were doing the same things that we are doing today in America with children and the teaching of gender Confusion. Gender confusion, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's also the, the whole cl the worship nature, climate laws. You start to realize, wait a minute, everything we're doing falls under this definition of wokeism, and this is the foundation for what is coming. And again, it's the harlot. What, what's, what's a harlot for? The master of the harlot uses that harlot for his purposes, then he disposes her. That's exactly what Revelation chapter 17 tells us the 10 kings are going to do. They're going to hate the harlot. Bible tells us that. They will use this. They, they know it's a lie. They know all that. But they will use that because it's going to give them their power in that the world's being conditioned mentally and they don't even recognize it as a religion. It is a religion. It is a God. It's demonic, this thing that is happening. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, I mean, there's certainly, as we look at the world, there's not a lot to rejoice over, but let, let's, end it, let's end this on some positive. What's, what's the hope? What's yeah. the, you know, what's, what, what do you instruct Christians? Listen, the hope is in Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus himself said, you know, uh, uh, Christians will say, why do I even need to know these things? Well, Jesus said, watch and be ready, mm -hmm. right? So we, we should watch and be ready, but other people need to know. So it will strengthen our faith because we know, again, they're the fear mongers, not us. Um, we know that we get to look up and lift up our head because when we see the fear mongering, mm -hmm. uh, we know our redemption is near. Uh, we're going to be called home. And I, like you, Mondo, I totally believe we're supposed to occupy until he comes. We need to be taking the gospel out there. And that's why we also have the gospel at the end of the book. It's an easy enough to read book. It has the depth. And for those who uh, it'll strengthen our faith, but for those who don't know Christ and are wondering what in the world's going on, the book connects it with everybody without it being offensive. Mm -hmm. And it does give the answers, and it does take you through the deeper places that you need to go to understand. Amen. Tom, appreciate your time. Uh, and appreciate you watching today. And, and if you're looking around at the world and you're seeing the way it's collapsing, uh, again, the hope is in Jesus Christ. We appreciate your prayers for us, what we're doing here. And we ask you continue to continue to keep us up because we know that the enemy's coming, and certainly censorship is around, but we want to occupy till Jesus comes. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.